<laughs> you drink to forget, Bigfoot. Oh, you have a huge boner? Well, we gotta handle that. Stop, I'll fall asleep. Stop. <laughs> You're a weeaboo. You just don't want to admit it. That's fucking psychotic. <laughs> You're a hundred percent right, buddy. I, I am <laughs> metaphorically dominating you in this show. Oh my god. Pew, 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 pew. Hello, welcome to Gas Digital Now, the Gas Digital Wrap-Up Show. Um, happy holidays, happy everyone. Happy holidays, yeah. You're wearing your nice little Christmas holiday sweater. It's, um, I am. I'm Blind Mike, and that is Gay Hard Natalie. Gay Hard Natalie. Also no, now known as Irish Natalie. Irish Natalie, yeah. She's... No one knew I was <laughs> Irish until I went to Ireland. You're not even Italian anymore. You lost that privilege. I'm both. I can be both. And the card over. Uh, you can see this when I bought this sweater on the uh, gas journal a couple months ago. And I had to finally bring it out on camera on this festive episode. There's nothing really Christmas about it at all except for the bows, I guess. But I it mean, was It's my most whimsical sweater that I own. Um, Well, it is Christmas. It's Christmas, you can tell, by the festive doilies all over the table. There's some stuff behind Mike. You can just see the very corner of it. And... Because of that, uh-huh. I had who who would I be if I did not get my podcast host a gift? I got you something too. And it, so, in spirit of uh, it's not coming out yet, but no. uh, we had a Yankee swap yesterday. We did. You'll hear about that next week, <laughs> so- and you'll probably see it in like February when the episode <laughs> finally airs. <laughs> But <laughs> but yes, we did have a Yankee swap. Yes, it better, so, it better not be the gift that in you spirit got of that. that you fucking got yesterday. I got you an actual gift. Here's your gift. It's a candle. oh my god! It's a candle. <laughs> I do fucking lo- I do love candles. No, I was just it, oh, and this right. smells great. It was just to fuck with you because you got a candle for Alvin. You're like, I hate my gift that I gave someone. Yeah, else. I I provided what? a candle. I didn't realize that it was like. Someone said fifty dollars, and I was like, "Oh, then I have to get something else, I guess." And they were like, "No, no, it's fine. It's up. It's maximum fifty dollars." <laughs> to- played myself real bad. Here's my gift for you. Wait, wait, hold on. Pause, pause, pause. We have to. Let's go over this. Um. So yeah. So you got that. Yes, I. So you uh, got the candle. I had. I provided you brought the a candle, candle, which I said look like you just kind of went like this into a bag from your mantle and you did not I like did that. not no I um I was buying something on that website I wanted the f- basically and this this candle website was like bu- buy anything and you get a free big candle and I wanted the big one and so I just picked a candle so this is literally what she did you did the same thing that Tom did where you just bought yourself I did and I got Tom's yeah. I got Tom's I got the one so- that Tom provided me and well, My beer's gone, by the way. He ex- drank it. Can I just explain this? So Tom <laughs> bought him he, for the, the swap. You'll see he bought himself a uh, gift, and he just thought, oh, you know, I'll just pick it when I get up there. Yeah, <laughs> and, the then and, and then didn't. And then I got it. it. And so I think Nat did the same thing when she bought the candles. He's like, this is I'll for get, me. If I get this back, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then Ralph got it, and uh, they were like, no, it's perfect. Ralph doesn't need anything, so it's perfect that he got it. What can you get the man that has it? Exactly. A candle. Um, but I actually got you a real gift. Okay. And I don't know how far you got with what you were already reading, but okay. I know you have so much downtime sometimes and you like to read. I do like to so, read. So. Is it Mein Kampf? I got you a book. I don't know what is in it, but it was a collection of stories. Enjoy. Thank you. Uh, I figured I, a co- I figured a collection would be better because I don't know exactly what you Hell like yeah. to read. So yeah, just yeah. like yeah. Oh, it's like one of those free blind dates. Oh, unless you wrapped this, in which case you did a really good job because this is super neat and nice. Should I hold it up while I open it? Oh my god! I don't think I'm academic enough for this. It's, a, it's Nabokov. It's a, I don't know what that means, but... He's, he's, it, it's like stuff that you read, like which is very me. I will read them. Okay. I will love the hell out of this. Thank you, dude. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. I don't, no, I, don't I actually know who really... Fuck this guy is. He, he, like, academic people read them. It's like something oh. that you would read in like college, All which right. I will read. <laughs> I actually really like short story books. That I prefer. Okay. And a candle. This is like a perfect gift for me. Sure. It is. All right. Fair I enough. love to read and I love candles. Hell yeah. 
Yeah, I love short stories. Yeah. Um. All right. Let me open the gift here. I can already tell what it is. You can tell what it is. <laughs> and your tires are not going to survive. No, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I have one. <laughs> I'm well aware. Let's check it out, folks. It is a Swiss Army knife. You need one. Shout out to him. You yes. said that you liked mine so much, so I got you one. Hell yeah. Now we are knife twins. Knife twins. This is the new dad. This is the gas digital dad meat. That's what the fuck <laughs> this is. We're going to be just holding eyes in our hands the entire episode. Yeah. Dude. Hell yeah. Yeah, I left mine. Man. Oh, I'm so into this candle. Are you, you actually? Yes. You know, real. it cost me $4. I know. I can Target. tell by room, <laughs> room essentials. <laughs> Yeah, this is, I love it. It's great value. It's a great value. And the book is great, too. <laughs> no, that was a Walmart reference. Great value. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. That's their store brand? <laughs> we don't have Walmart where I live. What? For real. I, you have to go to, like, <laughs> South Amboy to get to the nearest Walmart. <laughs> you have to go to the river. You have to go halfway to Philly if you want to find a Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Well, do you have anything else? Uh, I, all right. I do want to, before we get, get into any clips or anything... So Merry Christmas. Merry Hope Christmas. You that. But you never really talked about, I mean, it's been two weeks. He got sick. We never heard about Ireland. You didn't hear about Ireland. I need to know. It was fucking great. It was good. I uh, I talked about it on Mike Vecchio Investigates. Natalie is back from her trip to Ireland. How was it, Natalie? Let's, br let's bring in a woman's perspective, which is, um, I think, necessary now to stay on the air. It was very beautiful. It was very beautiful yeah. and peaceful. I stayed in my great aunt's house that she had built. Stayed in your lane. <laughs> hey. I'm sorry, Natalie. I'm, I'm talking over you for entertainment reasons. <laughs> you stayed at your great aunt's house? Yeah, my great aunt had a house built in Ireland. Yeah, um, you have an Italian last name, but, you, but then when you go to Ireland, do you become Irish? My dad's half Irish. Your dad's half Irish. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's some legitimacy there. And um, you stayed at your great aunt's house. Yeah. Um, you know, it was half half spending time with family in the countryside and half tourist destinations. Right. So what did you leave out of Mike Vecchio and Investigates? Oh, okay. So I, I was with my dad the whole time. I saw some family first couple days of the week, stayed at my great aunt's house who just died a couple months ago. So it was very like personal staying in her house, you know? And um, she had this house built on the property where her grandfather grew up. So there's just this like ruins of a like a stone house oh, next to the property, which is very cool. Was. Yes. So there was like that's neat. Yeah, the views are beautiful. I saw a lot of sheep. He, you did a great impression of me last week at the start <laughs> of the episode. I really liked it. <laughs> You got the sheep flu. Yeah, I did. I got the sheep. You were like, she came in last week and she was like, look at these sheep. And that's exactly what I fucking did. What did you, um, what was the coolest fact you learned about sheep? Anything? Did you learn anything Learn about, about sheep? sheep? Oh my God. Um, no, I didn't actually learn anything about the sheep. What's the, the, the funniest story you can tell from your, your trip? Funniest there? story that I can tell. I mean, there was the one where you went to the bar with your dad. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were at this bar. Did you bar. say that on Vecchion? No, I didn't. I didn't really talk much on Vecchion about it. I just said, yeah, I went to Ireland. I'm also Irish. Um, so there were these two bars that we went to. The first one we went to in Galway, which was my favorite city that we went to. Um, my dad wanted to hear some Irish music. We went to this bar, and they were playing, and there were these teenagers just fucking dancing lo losing their fucking minds nice. and i was like listening to the music and the music was good and then they faded into a, a song that i recognized what and it i was like that's weird and my dad started laughing he's like ah this song and i it wasn't until the song almost ended i was like why can't i place it it was the boxer by Simon and garfunkel whoa which is it sounds like an Irish song if you play it like that. Yeah. Um, and then the other funny story at a bar was in Dingle. That was the name of the city, the oh, town that we lived in. That's a great name. Um, what a fantastic name. The, yeah, the, the owner of our B&B &B was called Gary. So that was funny. <laughs> I told my friend Gary about it. 
But we went to this bar and there was a ir- different kind of Irish music playing where it was just like, it was like a jam session with these older people playing instruments, just like jamming out. And this guy was talking to us and he looked like any Irish dude you would see at a bar, like a uh, middle-aged dude. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he started talking to us. I'm like, oh, y- he was from Oregon. Nice. He was from the Midwest. Yeah. He sounded like he was from the Midwest. So that was funny that the only dude we talked to at a bar was not Irish. He was American. But you are also, um, uh, you said Colin was there at the same time as you. He was. Yeah. I, I saw Colin. He was on, I, I want to say, rap the week before. And I was like, I'm going to Ireland next week. And he was like, oh, me too. And he was there like the day we arrived. So it didn't work out. Man. Yeah. So close to just hanging out in Dingle. The, I know. <laughs> um, did you see any castles? I saw some castles, dude. Tell me about it. Are you asking that because you know I saw some castles? I just want to hear about it. You them. just teed me up? I couldn't tell. Um, we stayed in a castle. And uh, the last two nights, we stayed at a castle that was renovated into a nice hotel. Nice. Yeah, That's so awesome. saw a few castles. There we go. And some sheep. And so many sheep. So many sheep. All so right. many sheep, dude. Hell yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Comment below. Your favorite vacation spot. And if you've been to Ireland, did she portray this accurately? Yeah. I stayed in Galway, Dingle, Dublin, (laughs) and my family was was in Dunlow. So if you have any association with any of those places, let me know. Was Dublin cool? Did it remind you? Dublin was really fun, yeah. Did it remind you of an Irish New York? Yes. Really? Yes, for real. (laughs) It was like... It was not so New York-y. There was a lot of it that reminded me of Boston. Uh, like the park in... I forget what the main shocking, park is called. By the way. Shocking, Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was, one of the flights n- around mine was uh, Dublin to Boston. I was like, that's the most Irish flight you could f- possibly take. Yeah, that's um, Dropkick Murphy's just Literally. the entire time. Shipping up. <laughs> anyway, shipping up to Boston. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well... Last week on Legion of Skanks, okay. H. Foley and Kevin Ryan were on. Yeah. And we found out that H. Foley had a thriving musical H. career. H. Foley has a band that I would that would probably be in yeah. my fucking shuffle, I swear. <laughs> he you, said that to me when you, he came in. You said that to me when I came in that day. It was like, you would have listened to him. I didn't know it was going to be warped to our music. I don't know why I guessed that. <laughs> You took my vans, you took my sweater. I said I'd never see you again. You took my heart, you took my Camry. <laughs> you took my vans, is all right. And you would listen to this music, probably. If it if it was on in a if it was in a playlist that I was listening to, I probably wouldn't like complain. I'd be like, huh, all right. You know, I wouldn't uh, be upset. Right. You know, I'd just be like, hmm, okay, I guess. Oh my god, it's not so bad. All right, it's just unexpected. Yeah. So, out of all the gas digital hosts here, who do you want to see have a musical career? What genre would they be in? Ian. Oh, ska. ska for sure, yeah. Ian. It wasn't he in a ska. Band? Yeah, I think so. Wow, I think we got there. Hell yeah. So speaking of Bye Guys, <laughs> is there Bye Guys Club this week? I wrote down something for Bye Guys. Oh well, first, yeah, before we do that, uh, it was just so funny this week on Bye Guys when they were talking about OnlyFans and they're like, speaking of OnlyFans and Zia. Oh, and Zia walks in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was gonna talk about. <laughs> uh, they were talk. They were talking about the. Big Comfy Couch Girl. The girl from the... You never saw The Big Comfy Couch? No. It was a preschool show that... Maybe I was the tail end of it, if you don't remember it. Weird. That was very much a part of my childhood. Uh, Anyway, she would do the the fucking clock dance. I don't know the clock dance. You didn't see that? Alright, am I pulling you up a clip (laughs) right now? Yeah, please. What the fuck is the clock dance? I can't believe you don't remember the big comfy cat. Watch for a long time and bar. <laughs> Talking about she would do Why splits. Why is that hot? Nine fifteen on dude, the clock. Bro, it looks like <laughs> this is what I would watch it for. This Whoa, is why. I that's yeah. so yeah. crazy oh that you God. sexualized that because no I. No have always been. How do I not? Right now. No, 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 no wonder I've for. always been horny at seven ten. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that. Dude, dude she looks like Miss. 
So this is what it was. She would just do different times of day with her arms and legs. What the fuck? Yeah. Wait, like, can there was no dial. Is there any way to zoom in? Because I can't really see it. Oh, uh, here, let me pull up an actual picture. So, wait, pause. All right, so she would spread her legs on camera? Yep. Whoa. And then the dude. point, they're like, this is what any OnlyFans chick would do. And then you see walks in. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, yo, what? <laughs> Damn. So, I mean, she talked other times during the show, but... <laughs> that's some good core, though. She yeah, that's pretty crazy. Core. All right, your turn. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, the reason I brought this up is because Zach said this show was a sexual awakening for him for that. I was going to ask if you had another show that was a sexual awakening for you. Ooh. What did I watch? Well, Mine's all right. Here's the thing. The only one I can think of is a little. I was like a. T I was like a young yeah, teen. teenager. Yeah. So here's the thing. My parents were very guarded about what I was able to watch. Right. So I didn't get to watch any of like the adult shows until I was like an adult. So I was stuck with Nickelodeon. Right. Like up until I was 18. Sure. Wow. So I guess my awakening would probably be iCarly. But Good you one. know what? Suck my. They dick. make out a lot on that show. Yeah. Uh, they do. There's some specific episodes I remember. They talk about this show on the episode, I was going to say Degrassi. Mm, before the, my time. Couldn't be me. No, it was not. It, they it, they were still making new ones. It, uh, yeah. it went on long through. So the but one that was a sexual peak. awakening for me was the one after Drake. I don't I don't know if any famous people came out of it, but this the cast of people after Drake's cease. run. There's a lot of steamy shit on that show. Then that woke you up. Yeah, sure did. I, I'm pretty sure I paid on iTunes for an episode of Degrassi because there was some stuff going on in it. <laughs> All right, it was well. like, I don't remember that. I don't remember what. Actually, yes, I do. But <laughs> but I don't remember. I don't know. It would be really funny yeah, actually, if it. Yes, I do. It would be funny if it, if it fucking. Uh, you know how iTunes, if you buy it on any device, it'll. Uh transfer yeah it'll, it'd be it's funny on, if it's it on was, the cloud it would be funny if it was in my phone right now um except <laughs> i can't find it i don't know where it would be do you have thoughts on the on the porn wrapped because two shows talked about yeah that. so what are the top porn searches Okay, so um, I can tell you the top four, and it has switched a little bit from last year. Uh, number four, Eb Ebony. Number three, MILF. Number two, Lesbian. Number one, Hentai. Isn't Hentai just like drawn child porn? It's not child porn all the time. It's like... It's I, I, every time I've ever seen Hentai, it's like a, a girl in like a school uniform. They definitely do skirt. The Japanese are very perverted. They do skirt that line. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I'm not going to say... Like, I, I've, most of the time I've seen it, that seems to be the appeal. I, um, I think it's for autistic guys. Honestly, no, I feel like uh, there's it's a autistic guys. B, I feel like there's a whole generation of Natalie in the booths <laughs> who definitely go hard on hentai. Yeah, oh, Natalie, do you watch hentai? The Natalie in the booths. That. It's been a minute, but yeah, guilty. It's great. You don't need any porn stars in there, so no one gets taken advantage <laughs> of. You just draw it. I like that there's a plot. <laughs> I like there's a resolution. There's characters that I could be. Oh, the mythos. Dude, I want no plot. Okay, uh, e even can I, can I make a uh, devil advocate? The only you plot like I want is the one her parents are buried in. Devil. Can I play devil's advocate? Please. You've is said that the porn name? <laughs> devil's said, advocate. Yes. You said before. But you have to do it in Al Pacino's voice. <laughs> Get oh, I'm playing the <laughs> devil's advocate. I beat off the hentai. <laughs> is a little schoolgirl. <laughs> uh, well, look, my searches were. Uh, it's changed a little bit. Yeah. Ever since. Right, right, right. Skank That's why Fest. it's this. Oh, okay. Interesting. So <laughs> what is it a now? Lot. <laughs> It's gotten a lot more, uh, I guess, um, straight. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Actually, we talked about this recently in the studio out there. I do search a lot of redhead shit. Interesting. Redheads are very popular. We were talking about this with Zia and how like popular like guys actually like redheads. They just don't want to talk about it. Did um did her, I wonder if her her subscribership has gone up since she dyed her hair. 
Good question. Well, what do you think? What do I th- about redheads? Or about my porn searches? Both. I don't really I as everyone knows I use Tumblr, so I just have <laughs> uh blogs that I follow and then I click on their posts and click on who reblogs those posts that I like and then follow them. <laughs> I'm very rarely <laughs> searching. Um Mine, it literally depends on the to... mood that I'm in. It it might be two women, it might be two men. Yeah. It's rarely a guy and a girl, but it might be a few different people. Wait, so you only do gay shit? I only do gay shit, <laughs> That's yeah. That's crazy. And honestly... That's wild. Honestly, threesomes, etc. are also a little gay, because there's usually, <laughs> you know... Can you give me an explanation for why? I don't like the the roles that they give in straight porn a lot of the time well you talked about this too you like plots which is i do like plots but i also don't like i if i'm gonna watch straight porn it's gonna be like a the dude in a more submissive role and the girl in a more dominant role which is hard to find so or not even necessarily i just think that there's a lot of and Lewis pointed this problematic out. Problematic shit in, in fucking straight porn that I don't like. Lewis pointed this out, and I'm going to agree with him. That's fucking psychotic. Is you're it? crazy. <laughs> Is it psychotic psycho, to want to get attached to people's, like, interpersonal relationships? No, no, not that. The the, the submissive male. Oh. Dog. <laughs> don't yuck my yum. Man. I guess. But that's and I'm it's, scared. Yeah, it's not now even you see why I have the knife on the show. She's going to dominate me. <laughs> I, I am... <laughs> metaphorically <laughs> dominating you in the show. Oh my god. Pew 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 pew. Um <laughs> it's not even necessarily that it's just like uh it's not even necessarily woman top man bottom. It's le- more like two people that are equals, you know? People two people that are enjoying the transaction equally. The transaction. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean they're they're getting paid, hopefully. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to see a girl, like, get called a whore all the time, you know? I don't think many guys do. In real life, no. But no, I like, mean, porn- like, even in p- watching porn, I don't know that there's that many people watching. I like, don't really this. like professional porn. Because mm. half the time, the audio is not synced up, which I hate. Have you... <laughs> all right. Call me fucking crazy. Sometimes... <laughs> I'll open a video and the audio will be from a completely (laughs) different video as if I'm not going to notice. What what, a porn are you watching? I don't know. No, it's not. No, not at all. This is definitely No, because Tumblr is all amateur, which I enjoy. (laughs) I'm talking real professional shit. It drives me insane. As someone who's done It takes me out of it. (laughs) Yes. As someone who's done, do a better job. I mean, for sure, you would... how would you do it better? Would you go like this? Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Call you it just a day. Clap four times. <laughs> call it a day. We got there. We made it. <sighs> we made it. I wanted to know what um, what's your favorite plot you've ever seen? Uh, there or the was funniest, craziest, funniest, anything. craziest. There was just... one that I saw in hentai once a long time ago. That was <laughs> yeah, I swear to God, no, that's where you find the funny shit. You ask me funniest porn plot and that's think I'm not going to say hentai? <laughs> it's just so funny that you watch hentai. I don't anymore. <laughs> Actually, I mean, I should. It was you great. Should. Highly recommend. <laughs> it right. had episodes. Like, that's what I really like. I'm going to follow <laughs> these fucking characters. So the plot it's was like that. like your sex anime. The plot. You like sex liter- anime. That's what hentai is, dude. You like sex anime. It's literally what it is. <laughs> You're a weeaboo. You just don't want to admit it. <laughs> You're a weeaboo for dicks. It's the most insulting thing you've ever said to me. All right. Um, well. <laughs> it was there was this plot where it was like this dude who lived. They, he needed to be tutored, and he had like five hot tutors that he lived with in the house for some reason, and they all had sex with him. It was one dude and like four or five women who were who would tutor him in different subjects. But they would never get to it. They would. They'd be like, "Oh, you have a huge boner. Well, we gotta handle that before you, we start tutoring you." <laughs> Obviously, uh, clearly, clearly, that was the funniest plot that I've ever seen. Um. So Mike Figs mm-hmm. is um, now in on the thing. Is hooray! Congrats to you. Congrats sir. to him. But as he was getting to know Shannon, he was trying to give her. Uh, he was telling her about his fears. <clears throat> 
and I guess his his fear was basically being afraid of the dark. Oh, <laughs> that was it in a nutshell. Oh basically. God. I think what I have is something called it's called nyctophobia. Okay, so what does nyctophobia mean? I have no idea. NYC to phobia. This is what Maddie has. Night or darkness. Oh That's good, Sabrina. <laughs> extreme, or, <laughs> extreme or irrational fear of the night or darkness. Oh, maybe all of my co-hosts have this fear. Yeah? You think so? Yes. I want to know what your weirdest fear is. I'm very afraid of being pushed in front of the subway. Like House of Cards style. Is that, that happening in House of Cards? Yeah. I um I always stand behind a pillar when the train is coming. I'm very much afraid of... I'm actually also... Actually, I guess my dumbest fear is being crushed in the doors of the subway. I'm very afraid of the subway. But I'm not Man. afraid of anyone who's on the subway. I'm afraid of the cars. You uh, must have hated that Tim Butterly story then. From That Grace was Manning. so scary. Yeah, that would have been my biggest fear. <laughs> because that's not only... That's not underground. That's above ground. It's above too. ground. That's even worse. Yeah. How about you? So mine is a little bit more embarrassing. Let's I think. hear it. My dad used to take us on hikes, uh -huh. and this is still a fear I have to this day. Let's hear it. Going into the woods, I'm always afraid of Bigfoot. I know that sounds corny, but I'm still Why? afraid of Bigfoot. Why him specifically? I, I listen to it. So I go, uh, if anyone's a fan of Shane Gillis, they, they've probably heard about how he listens to like <laughs> Civil War stories to go to bed and like serial killer podcasts. Sure. For me, it's Bigfoot stories. How interesting. So all I listen to is just, like, people's reports of, like, being attacked and shit. And I don't know. I just, I don't know why, but I That's always. That's crazy. I, I just have this fear of, like, a big, a big fucking, you know, Bigfoot following me through the woods and throwing rocks at me and shit. That's why you avoid Ralph whenever he comes in. Yeah, that's what it is. He is Frankenstein. Yeah. I mean, he does have big feet. Whoa. He's a fucking tall dude. <laughs> You see his feet and you go, ah, get those away from me. <laughs> not I, my I search. Do, That's your that search, too. not me. <laughs> your search is big feet. Hey. <laughs> um, I support you, man. I, it makes more sense that you like listen to Bigfoot stories all the time and that's why you're afraid. I thought it was just like a random like. It. I don't know why it helps me go to sleep. All right, can I explain to you why? Yeah. So it's almost like, you know how like you could fall asleep really easy in math class because <laughs> you were thinking so hard? Yeah. That's the same for me oh, because okay. I'm trying to prove the story wrong. So as I'm thinking about why the story you do this is every bullshit, day? why the story is bullshit, the, it helps me fall asleep, and I just I never get to the. End you do of the this story. every day. I used to a used lot to. less now because I just get drunk and fall asleep. That's not good, man. You're drunk. To, you're you drink <laughs> to forget Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah. Sometimes, more recently, I've been picking it back up again a little bit. I'm not gonna. Lie. I like that for you. <laughs> I just watch ASMR videos like a normal person, but whatever. Yeah, I love that shit. Hey guys. Me and Dylan love that shit together. We bond over it. Hey guys. Please don't. This is Cast Digital. Please don't. And we <laughs> today we're going to be looking I'm not doing it. Natalie, smell your candle. <laughs> Stop, I'll fall asleep. Stop. <laughs> uh did you have anything else you wanted to discuss? I have a few more things I wanted to I have a couple more things. Let's hear it. Um, what are your thoughts on the, the man show style documentary that we're making for Without a Country of girls with big titties jumping on trampolines talking about climate change? We gotta make climate change more interesting. I don't know if we do like the man show where we just get hot, big titted ladies jumping on trampolines talking about climate change, but this, the strategy that we have right now, guys, isn't working. We have to make climate change more interesting. Otherwise, no one will pay attention. And I know that seems like a ridiculous thing to have to dangle keys over America like we're little babies getting a photo taken in the mall. But we know that. Let's so stop trying to fix Americans. They're not going to get fixed. We need to fix the planet, okay? dangle. Find a way to dangle the keys because other the earth is melting underneath us otherwise. Corinne, can I just point out? That my dog is crying? No, that you have a trampoline. Yes, I do. But I, I don't have tits. I know some women who have tits. Okay. We can just, all we need to do is read facts from this documentary. Love it. Just have hot girls jumping in your trampoline. I love it. We 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 spitball. I have so many great ideas that we spitball on this podcast, but then we never film them during the week, so we have to do this. Look, Send me your avails, Mike. Theatrically, it's going to bomb because nobody's going to movie theaters anymore. But I'll tell you right now, Hulu? Yeah. Right. They pay 2 million dollars for that. Okay. Well, we get we, we get a nice camera, we get some nice tits, and we get and we, we get on that trampoline. I think this is a great idea. 
That's right. I want to see you in it. <laughs> I my titties are not big enough. I'm not qualified. Please. I'm not qualified. Damn it. I uh, I know the giant Only sweater for this is distracting, but yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's a really funny idea, and I also don't agree that like people won't care about if they made a um. Actually, can I back this up? Yeah. Instead of you in it, I want to see Mike Figs in it. He's got. Oh something. yeah, he's got bigger titties than me. <laughs> hey. Um, I don't think it's true that no one will care about. I think if they made a hit piece style documentary series on Netflix about climate change, people would be into it. There was a documentary that I saw that was like Dirty Money or something like that. If they made a Dirty Money style documentary about climate change, I think people would care. I don't think you need tits in it. But I mean, I want to see it. I want to see whatever they make with this. We are really doing it. Yes, this is so exciting. I can't wait. Uh, Harrington already told me that the, the people he has lined up, uh, you're in for a treat, everyone. Chef's, Hell yeah. Chef's kiss. Hell yeah. Uh, oh, are we going to talk about my poll? My cereal poll? Ugh, you and your poll. My poll? Your attention-seeking <laughs> poll. You're 100% right, buddy. <laughs> I saw that from my way. I'm like, you don't actually believe this. Oh, right, sure I do. Because I, no, you don't. You sure just do. wanted attention. I'm telling you. I did you want right attention, <laughs> but I do I do believe that. All right, I just wanted to stir shit it. up. Anyway, I put a poll on my Instagram with a picture of the cereal I have in my home right now that I've been enjoying all week, I swear to God. Cheerios, Rice Krispie treats, and uh Frosted Flakes. And I go, these are three top tier cereals, true or false. And the first ten votes were false. And they're incorrect. I'm not saying these are the top three cereals of all time. I'm just saying they're all good. They're all reliable, no, good ones. They're mid tier. Which ones? I mean, Frosted Flakes, you could say, is like the bottom of the top tier, maybe. But Cheerios yes. and Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies didn't even are choose, comfy. You didn't even choose the best Sh Rice Krispies. Sugary ones? You didn't choose the chocolate, chocolate rice. Chocolate ones are great. Which is better. The chocolate You're ones are great. But I, you can't psycho. do that all the time. You can't do just chocolate and sugar and all the time. You need some reliable rice cereals. All right. Can I give you what would be the top tier then? I would say top tier would be like Frosted Flakes. Fruit Loops. Nah, I don't need Fruit Loops all the time. I oh, like... sorry. Actually, no, that's wrong. No Fruit Loops. You going to say Reese's Puffs? Sure, Lucky Charms. Uh, anything with marshmallows, get that Cinnamon shit away from me. Toast crunch. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, yeah. All and right, I would say Golden Grams. I haven't had Gold Grams in a really long time. I'm gonna say uh, Frosted Flakes, Reese's Puffs, and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Top three. But I also like the chocolate so rice krispies. Everyone, didn't listen. She just admitted that it doesn't make her top tier list. Top tier is not three. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. These are not my top three ever. I'm just saying they're all good, reliable, good cereals that I enjoy. Okay. Okay. You need you need the Rice Krispies sometimes. You can't have sweet garbage all the time. I don't eat cereal. Oh, I've been eating a lot of cereal this week because <laughs> we have three boxes. I've been eating cereal almost every day this week. Oh, my God. It's good shit. I was... Uh, the, the, the Frosted Flakes especially. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, before we wrap up, I was going to say on Spook Show last week, and Zach has said it on a couple different Spook Shows, what counts as a Christmas movie? Oh, I mean... Because in the episode, we watched this movie called Trancers, which is a sci-fi knockoff of Blade Runner and Terminator that takes place at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. and, is very, and the the point was to decide during the course of the movie... If it's a Christmas movie or not. And it definitely is. There's a lot of Christmas shit involved. So what do you think constitutes a Christmas movie? Does it just have to take place at Christmas time? Or does it have to involve the Christmas spirit in some kind of way? You know, preferably it has a bunch of blue people in it. And then uh, they go into the water and they start talking like water animals. You'll hear about that and <laughs> next week when we talk about high society. <laughs> Again, next week. You'll hear about that. <laughs> All right, no, for no real. No, Avatar, The Shape of Water, or whatever the fuck is not a shape Christmas of movie. <laughs> yeah, The Shape of Water. I've never seen The Shape of Water. <laughs> the one where they where she fucks the fish. They, why do they fuck fish in this movie? It's crazy. She fucks the fish man in The Shape of Water. <laughs> I've never seen it. It's crazy. And they go, how, how does he do it? What does this dick look like? And she goes, that's the only thing I know about The Shape of Water. Incredible. Um... Can you go first so I can think of mine? Yeah. Please. So, 
I think that a Christmas movie has to involve... I'm very much team Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. Nothing about it has to do with Christmas at all. Um, I think that Love Actually is a Christmas movie. What is Love Actually about? It's it's just like a romantic comedy involving like several different storylines and it takes place around Christmas time. But they all have to kind of do with Christmas. I think Just Friends is a Christmas movie. Pretty sure Just Friends takes place around Christmas time. Is Bros a Christmas movie? <laughs> is Bros a Christmas movie? I've never seen Bros. I really want to see Bros. <laughs> You know what? We'll go. I'll, we should I'll go. Get you a ticket. I think yeah. it's out. I think it's out of theaters. Uh, we should watch it here, though. We should, yeah. And then I'll show up late and do thumbnails. <sighs> we'll hear. Don't spoil it. <laughs> I gotta find out next week what happened and what we decide is. All right. Uh, no, I would. I don't know. I don't watch that many movies. I wish I could give you a better answer. Um, I would probably say. But if right, you were gonna define so, a Christmas movie, how no, would you define it, it? I don't think it's a Christmas movie. It just happens on Christmas. I think there should be some kind of plot line that revolves around the holiday at the very least. I agree. Um, do you have anything else that you wanted to talk about? Uh, I wanted to also say. Watch no, that's the- it on my notes. I just threw my notes. Woo! No, that's it. Watch the UFC live stream, by the way. Did you catch that? Did you watch that from your house? Did I watch it? No. Oh, okay. But I saw that it was streaming and I peeked in to see you guys and I'm like, this means nothing to me. Did you hear about the bet? No, what was the bet? So, uh, on the show, um, I've, I don't really bet. Uh huh. But I wanted Harrington to because Harrington so bet. Hard. <laughs> Last year on Thanksgiving, Harrington texted me and was like, hey, are you in New Jersey? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, can you bet on some, can you download any betting app? And at, 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 <laughs> he's like, and I'll give you a cut if I win. And how did it go? Yeah, he didn't win. Ah, right. I would have I done it again if he actually got me some money with it, but no. Man. Ah, so close. Um, well, <clears throat> I don't bet really, but I'm not opposed to it. Sure. So I doubt, so I got the DraftKings or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Uh, so I, basically I got a, I, I went into the betting app and I uh, I placed a bet. I said, "All right, I'm gonna bet on whatever Herring, the opposite of whatever Harrington does." That's good. So it was like I think it was some fighter by dis- uh, by knockout, and I got it. Did but you? I didn't place the bet in time. Fuck. So it just kind of sat there, and it was like uh, I I looked at the screen and I showed Harrington. I'm like, "Dude, why is it saying this?" He's like, "You didn't even place the bet." Oh Fuck you. God. <laughs> and- and then the rest of the night, oh, I didn't get no. a single other bet right. And I placed all of them with no problem. That sucks. It doesn't, that sucks. It doesn't suck as bad as me putting a bet in on the uh, the wrong app. So the, the, the app that I use ha- also has a fantasy uh-huh. betting app, I guess, for like fantasy sports, like fantasy football and shit. All, all sport, right, sports are fantasies. I get it. You, you're tired. No, not at all. in my face. Sorry. No, you. I'm listening. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, but, um, yeah, so I bet on, I bet in the wrong app, and I just never got the money back. And then I bet on the fighter that's on our network, and he lost. That sucks. Yeah, um. Rip. R.I.P. Uh, speaking of which, Rip, uh, R.I.P. Broad Topics, what a great show yeah. on the network. Go Almost back and 300 watch. episodes. That's yeah. crazy. That's so many. Go back and watch some of the classics. They're, I mean, it's gas digital history for sure. Yeah. Um, and they just uh, so much great content. Yeah. This was, you get to watch a relationship unfold. I yeah. Mean, come on, man. Really? It's crazy. Well, guys, uh, remember to subscribe to the Gas Digital Network to get every full ad free and uncensored episode that we mentioned today. It, it Make sure to. Um, Subscribe to the YouTube t- and watch my best of the week. Guys, watch the episodes with Chris from Brooklyn and Dave Temple. They're yes. actually funny. Yes, you should watch them. They're they're much funnier people than I am. Well, I mean, different t- types of funny. That's very sweet of you. <laughs> There's different types of funny. It's very funny. Funny looking is you. Hey. <laughs> uh, you got me. <laughs> anyway. Especially with the shirt. <laughs> Which, by the way, you can also go go behind the paywall to watch the gas journal where we get this shirt. Th- th- that one's still public. So right, watch well it quick before it goes behind the paywall. It's on the channel. The YouTube and watch the gas journal. Watch all of these gas digital nouns. That is at gas digital network. Uh, we got a handle, YouTube handle, but it's also gas digital because we can look it up that way. Yeah. Uh, remember to uh, follow the gas digital accounts at gas digital. 
Uh, follow Ralph Sutton. I'm now uh, doing He's his social fucking media. Social media bro, I'm turning bro. into the Jesus gas digital Kyla. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, make sure to follow me at that blind Mike T H A E T B L I N D M I K E. I post behind the scenes content from right here in this video and post show interviews. I got Moon by Mike Biggs. Uh, so that was pretty Love fun. Love it. Um, Natalie, what do you have to plug? Uh, Natalie DeChico edits on Instagram, D E C I C C O underscore edits. Uh, follow Doped Up Comedy on Instagram. I make all the clips for that. That's it. Watch the show. Hell yeah. Can you, um,. Merry uh, Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you for the gift. Happy holidays. Thank you. Yeah, um, thanks for the gift. Hell yeah. And uh, yeah, we will uh, see you uh, next week. <laughs>